If this comes out looking kind of crazy, you know why. Cause I, this is, I don't do this. And then we learn manual muscle testing. Mm. Don't blink. I blink. Hold on a hot minute, hot second. And this is the final look. I don't understand why you're thinking of What's up you guys, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Padilla and I am documenting my occupational therapy school journey. If you aren't, welcome back. Thanks for supporting, thanks for subscribing. And if you're back again to look at my lovely face and you aren't subscribed, just take a time, pause real quick. You can pause this video actually and go over to the little, you know, subscribe button, click that and then we can continue. Please and thanks. Anyway, you guys, today I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. My past videos have been mainly like vlog. Today I'm going to be sitting down and I'm gonna be talking to you all and I'm going to be basically doing a first semester of OT school recap while doing my makeup, yay! <laughs> Just to like put this out there, I don't wear makeup every day. Like I, I'll do my makeup like full face for like occasions, like special occasions, you know, stuff like that. But I barely like, like if I'm doing like a little bit of makeup, I'll do eyebrows, mascara, maybe some liner, and that's about it. But nine times out of 10, the majority of the day, like I don't wear makeup. So if this comes out looking kind of crazy, you know why, cause I, this is, I don't do this. But I'm gonna talk to you guys at the same time, so. I thought this would be a cool video idea. We'll see how it turns out. Starting off, I'm gonna put some primer on my face. I don't know if y'all can see that. Okay, yeah. So I, th this stuff, y'all, is low key kind of old. Um, this is what I've been using. It's green tea primer. I don't really don't know this. Um, oh, it's called Evan, Evelyn, Evelyn Iona, I guess. It's vegan green tea primer. I got it probably like in an Etsy bag back when I was doing Etsy. So I'm just gonna put this in my face. Oof, it looks really gross. <laughs> it's all I have. <laughs> oh, and the glasses are coming off and now I can't see. Great, this is great, this is gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. So anyway, just um, got to give you a little bit of background on my uh, school journey. I started grad school in January and it is currently June. You know, I went through my first semester. I'm currently actually like in summer semester. We have, we go through school throughout the whole year. So I'm, we're doing like this eight week uh, summer semester. And yeah, I mean, so far so good. I don't have any major complaints. It's going really fast. I'm ha I have my first field work um, this summer, which is pretty cool. It's like the very first field work that we have. And it's like once a week for like seven weeks, eight weeks. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. This video is about first semester. We took four classes the first semester. I know for a fact that I took OT, theory and process. I took OT, OT theory and process. I took uh, neuroscience. I took um, a movement class. It's not really the, the proper name for it, but it was a movement class. And then I took um, human occupations. There you go. It, you know, like it's not that long ago, but it feels like such a long time. So those are the classes that I took. Just a little brief description. Like, so OT theory and process class, We it's basically what it sounds. We learned about the theories and the models and um, like the process of the occupational therapy practice, basically, the steps that we go we take as occupational therapists when we you know provide therapy and the movement class we focused on like upper body so from the shoulder to the hand and we focused on how the movements of the body so like you know flexion extension pronation supination you know shoulder shoulder extension flexion internal external rotation all the movements of the of this part of your body and then we learn manual muscle testing we learn like the primary movers and um secondary move movers insertions and uh origins and insertions of the muscles but like i said we primarily primarily focused on this upper body because apparently that's that's what OTs focus on we don't really do a lot of lower body that's kind of what physical therapy does so yeah that class is pretty cool I'm gonna do my eyebrows next so for my eyebrows I use Anastasia Beverly Hills there we go 
Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the color dark brown. It's the crayon. It has the crayon and then it has the little spoolie thing. Um, and I have my little mirror over here, so I hope y'all can still see me. Movement class was pretty fun. Um, I enjoyed that class a lot. What else did we have? Neuroscience. So neuroscience was just basically what it sounds like. We learned about the brain and <laughs> how it works and you know, the essential nervous system. We related everything we learned to OT, but you know, a, a, a big area of practice for occupational therapy is like neuro conditions and neuro diagnosis. So yeah, we just, we learned about the brain and like how it works and the different things in your body. I'm probably like not giving that class justice because we learned like a lot in that class you know neuroplasticity and um if anyone has ever took taken neuroscience then you know that class was I, I guess for me that was like the most difficult i guess it was just like a, not a lot of new new concepts because like you learn about the brain but it's more concepts lastly i took human occupations and it was basically we learned about human occupations <laughs> uh so occupation is basically like anything that you do anything that you do want to do need to do so it can be like um driving going to work eating bathing brushing your teeth caring for your child taking your dog on a walk literally anything and everything that you do is an occupation so we learned about occupations we learned about activity analysis those are like the main things that I can remember from that class so what I did was I went on Instagram and I asked a while back a question to you know the people who follow me it's not a whole lot of people but you know they're there and I asked people to ask me questions about like stuff I should answer um, in this video so I'm just going to go back and find them I probably should have prepared better but you know it's okay so sad day because for some reason Instagram is being dumb and it's not letting me go back to that post and see the questions people ask me. Whatever, we're here. We're just gonna wing it, okay? Um, as you can see, I have one eyebrow on and I'm gonna do the other one. And you know, I might miss some of the questions people ask me and I'm just gonna like make it up. Anyway, so like, okay. As far as like classes that I um, liked the most versus the classes I didn't, the classes that I enjoyed the most was probably movement, mostly because like probably the professor, PJ, Professor Johnson is really cool and he makes things fun and interactive. If I had to rate them, I would do movement at the top and then human occupations just because that class was easier than the other two that I'm about to mention. Nero, just because the content was a little bit more difficult, cause it's like Nero. Professor is great, um, very interesting, and then theory at the bottom, just because, yeah, that class, um, I, that class is at the bottom. I started off the semester, like, I bought like binders because I was thinking I was gonna take write notes in class, so I would print out the PowerPoints and then take notes in class, but I don't write fast enough and like halfway through the semester, I decided that I was just gonna like do everything digital. I take everything online, which is what I do this semester. So downloading the PowerPoint and um, the university offers Office 365 and like the online version. So everything's kind of just online. So that's what I use because my computer doesn't have Microsoft and my operating system. I have a, a Mac, a MacBook Air and the operating system is outdated, so I can't get the most current version of the app. So I just use it all. I use everything like the online version of it, and it works out. Um, as long as the internet works, I'm fine, but the only bad thing about it is that I'm at the liberty of the internet, and if the internet is not working, then I can't do any of my homework, because that's how I save all my documents and PowerPoints and stuff like that. I think someone asked me, like, what would I do differently moving forward? I would say try to manage my time a little bit better. Like, I'm, st like, I'm halfway through summer, and I'm part still am not managing my time the best but I know if I did it would probably work out better for me I'm a huge procrastinator I don't know why I do this but I wait till the last minute to do everything um, whenever I have like free moment or free time I don't take advantage of it and do work I do the opposite of work and just kind of chill and like watch Netflix or whatever instead of getting the work done now like work now play later I'm like play now work later type of mentality so I feel like if I took the mentality of work now play play later type of thing it would be better off for me haven't got there quite yet but I did manage to make a 4-0 this semester um I'm, doing, I'm very proud of myself thank god for allowing me to do that I'm not promoting procrastination obviously 
but obviously it kind of it works for me it's not the most productive thing the most effective thing and I do want to not procrastinate it did not hinder my ability to make good grades this semester and honestly in grad school like it's not about grades anymore it's just about grasping the content I know my eyebrows look kind of weird right now but that's what concealer is for for concealer I'm using this stuff that's half empty it's pretty much really empty Mac Pro Long concealer in the color Mac doesn't do okay it's NW45 and this is like <laughs> one of the very first pieces of makeup I ever bought now I think about it so this is like really old and as you can see it's like really empty it's kind of gross but <laughs> yeah y'all need a close up on that so um, I'm gonna use this to like conceal my brows and I'm just gonna grab a little bit like this just a tiny bit oh, I can't see like this is terrible I'm so blind I'm using Morphe 516, no, M165 brush, angled brush. This is what I use to like conceal my eyebrows. I think this is the only Morphe brush I own. I do remember someone asking me how you get into like how you get into occupational therapy. Like, how would you start? To be an occupational therapist, you do have to go to grad school. So you do have to get an undergraduate degree of some kind. I got my undergrad degree in recreational therapy. Some people get their degrees in like exercise science or psychology or um, exercise physiology or something like that. Y'all trust the process. I know it looks crazy, but yeah. So you you have to get a four year degree first in then you, once you finish that, you apply to an occupational therapy program. Typically the requirements are, um, depends on the program. So some programs require GRE, some don't. A lot of them require observation hours. That number varies. Typical prereqs are like abnormal psych, developmental psych, anatomy and physiology, one and two. Some programs require chemistry. I know I took chemistry as a prereq, like, applying this time around to OT school. It all just kind of depends, but you do need prereqs and like the reason I, I did recreational therapy as an undergrad because a lot of the prereqs are similar to OT. Um, a lot of the classes you take in rec therapy school are prereqs for OT school. So um, that's not all of them. Those are just the ones at the top of my head. Then yeah, so you search schools. You hopefully already have the prereqs. If you don't have the prereqs, you take the prereq. You try to get observation hours um, under an OT somewhere like a clinic or um, like a inpatient rehab, outpatient rehab, whatever, wherever you can get in. The hours require vary based on programs. I know my program. My program is a new program, so the requirements were kind of lenient and kind of lax. Not, I mean, not just not as much as other programs were. And um, COVID did play a huge deal this time this year with uh, requirements because since people weren't able to get like observation hours and stuff like that, a lot of programs waived that. I don't know if it's still like a thing now, but that was the reason why I, I decided to like kick into year and actually apply this year that's another story though I will be making a video about my OT school like how I got here journey and then yeah you apply and you interview and then you know hopefully you get in there's lots of OT programs in the United States um in all different states but that's pretty much the process the process is get a get an undergrad degree apply to OT school. Oh, you probably need recommendation letters as well. Some require from OT, some don't. I think someone might have asked me what are some things that I didn't expect coming into OT school. So for my particular program, I did not expect, I thought it was going to be more rigorous than it was. Cause I'm thinking like, you know, this is grad school. Grad school is like a whole different level of higher education. It's, you know, it's can be harder than, you know, but for me, you know, me personally, this is just my personal experience. It really wasn't all that bad. It was, to me, it was very doable. And I think it's because the way our program is set up, our director, she made it so people can have a work-life balance. The program isn't designed to like overload us with like courses and stuff. I think I took like 14 credits last semester. Don't quote me, I'll probably double check that and put that somewhere in the video. 14 credits, four classes, 
Our classes either started at 10 in the morning or 10.30 and we ended around 2.20, 2.50 every day and we didn't have class on Friday because Friday was reserved for what's called I, I, IPE, interpersonal, wow, I forget what it stands for. And we didn't have that every Friday. So some, like, some Fridays we would just like, more, more of the Fridays we would not have class, you know, but it, it's a good opportunity to utilize that time to catch up on schoolwork and stuff like that. But the Fridays that we did have IPE, we would basically get together with the other health science programs. So it would be occupational therapy, physical therapy, physician assistant counseling, and we would come together and we would do activities, some type of interpersonal activities. Am I using the right word? Interprofessional, that is what it's called. But the days we didn't have that, we kind of had like a free day to do whatever. Typically you should probably use it for schoolwork, but I didn't always use it for schoolwork. But the program is like super like, super lenient, super, everyone's super chill and understanding. I don't want to say it was easy because school isn't easy, but it was very doable. And I, there were times of stress. Everyone handles stress differently. I think I handle stress pretty well. Or maybe it's like school is one of those things that don't stress me out. There might be times where I feel maybe a little bit panicky, but in the end it's just kind of like, you know, it is what it is. I still, I'm able to like still remain calm in the end and just do what I have to do to get things done. School doesn't stress me out. So overall this semester, in my opinion, just it wasn't hard. Um, I heard from like a first year student that first semester is pretty chill and then it gets it gets like difficult the far, farther into the program you go, which, you know, I'd expect that, of course. But overall, I, I, I enjoyed my first year. I didn't really struggle. To me, the work level low key kind of felt like undergrad. I hope like none of my professors see this and like think like they have to make the program harder or anything, but I just compare it to like the PT program here is super rigorous as a doctorate program. And I think it might even be accelerated doctorate program. Don't quote me on that. But like they take like, I think like 18 credits a semester and they start way earlier in the day, like like a eight to five type thing. Or even like the PA program. Like even my sister, she's in PA school and she would tell me how like she had tests, test after test after test. And it just wasn't like that for us. 202 programs can be totally different. Our program in particular is just more lax, I guess, in a sense. Definitely challenges you and I'm definitely learning the proper information I will need to learn as an OT. It wasn't super, 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 super hard. Like, like, like what I thought grad school would be, you know? I thought I would be like super stressed out, super struggling, you know? I mean, there were times where I stayed up late to finish assignments, that's mainly because I am a procrastinator, but overall, it wasn't hard. Eyebrows are done. I am now going to go in with this NYX, uh, not NYX, 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 I don't know. Total Control Pro uh, Drop Foundation in the color Mocha. I'm just gonna drop it all over my face, like it says, and apply it to my face. Oh, I'll do sections at a time. <laughs> this brush is a Sonia Kashuk Precision Foundation Brush. As far as like any other expectations that I had or like things I didn't expect, I felt like I'm painting my face. I guess that's the only thing that like I certainly like did not expect it to be that way. My expectations was that I was going into grad school and I was like prepared to like be swamped with homework and assignments and stuff like that. I'm just blending with this beauty blender now. But it didn't like, it didn't end up being that way. Some things that I enjoyed about my first semester in just OT school in general, I would definitely say my program that the program that I am in, they have like the faculty is amazing. We have some really, really super understanding people. Y'all, I just realized that I was, I'm was i supposed to do my eyeshadow before I do my face. I'm gonna stop the face and do the eyeshadow. I'm just putting concealer on my eyes. I really enjoy, I'm really happy that I'm in the program that I'm in because like I said, everyone's super, like the faculty is super understanding. All my cohort members, like I, I love, I love all my cohort members. I feel like we've gone, we've gotten closer after this first semester. And it's like when you're in grad school, yeah, when you're in um, a small grad school program like mine, you are with the same people every single day. My program, there's like 21 of us. I think it's like 21 of us, and we're all women. There's one guy in our program. You know, we're with each other Monday through Friday the whole time we're in. You know, we're in class. We, you know. 
know, we take the same classes together where we all do have to do the same assignments at, you know, at the same time. So it's like when you're going through like something like this, with a with the same group of people you grow a bond with each other i've made new new friends through the program everyone is really cool and really chill really nice i i like i said i I'm, i feel like i'm com repeating myself at this point but i enjoy the fact that our program is set up the way it is like if our program was any more rigorous then i would have had to make some like serious like changes because the way your girl is set up and the way she just like likes to wait until the last minute to do everything i would have had to like reevaluate and like change my study habits big time i guess i could probably still benefit from changing my study habits currently real quick i am going i, I put the concealer on my eyelid instead of using like a primer it's, um, i'm using this black radiance soft focus if it Flaute. I don't know. That's French. I said it wrong. It's called. It's in the shade Milk Chocolate Finish. It's just a setting. Oh, a finishing powder. Finishing powder. And I'm just gonna dust that over my eyelids real quick. This is the first uh, like brown powder, brown finishing powder I've tried. For I have I have like Urban Decay in there. It's just like a white translucent powder. The only thing about this powder is that it's super powdery. I don't know if that makes sense. It's just super like it gets everywhere. I guess I can kind of talk about some of the things that I learned in my first semester. Where oh no 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 here we go. Another thing that I really enjoy about how my program is set up. I don't know if they do this with other. OT programs but it's a small program and that's one of the things I was looking for when I was applying to OT school but because it's a small program and we have a small number of faculty they all interact with each other and you know they they talk to each other about like when we have tests or quizzes because they don't try to like overload us with a whole bunch of stuff at one time so they communicate but I like that all of our courses interrelated and interacted with each other so it's like something that we learn in neuro transferred over to what we were learning in movement or what we learned in theory was transferred over in human occupations like theory and human occupations definitely um, overlapped a lot the information was able to like set in better like we were learning about the OTPF in theory and then we were learning about it in human human occupations I really enjoyed that because it makes it like makes the information like stick you know when you're, when you're talking about it more than one class and then it's like everything that we learn we will have to apply in real life but definitely like movement like when we learn manual muscle testing and uh, learn how to use a goniometer um, those are things that we will be using in you know in OT practice and um, in neuro we, we learn how to do a lot of the screenings for like the cranial nerves so testing cranial nerve three four and six because those are the the nerves that control eye movement so like the convergence test the screen where you test like uh, your eye screening and your um, acuity um, that's cranial nerve one no two two one is olfactory, but we learn how to uh, test for stuff like that too, like screen for, um, you know, smell, vision, do, oh, and then we did like the touch screenings, like different types of touch, like heart, like, um, whoo, like temperature and like fine touch. Um, I don't want to say too much because then I might sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. But we learned how to screen for those different things and learned about specific diagnoses. Spina bifida, cerebral palsy. One of our projects for Nero, basically we had to basically do like a whole outline of everything we learned in that class. And at the end of the project it was this long conditions chart. And it was basically all the conditions that we went over. And we had to talk about what part of the brain it was associated with, the physiological processes, the symptoms and then like implications of occupation so how it'll affect people's ability to do their occupations and we went over all the conditions that we went through so like pot syndrome um yeah all that stuff because i'm blanking right now so let's go into the eyes i feel like this is the most difficult part of doing makeup um i am using the zulu by juvia's palette and then I'm going to be using this ColourPop palette. This is, you know, this is like one of the first palettes I've had. So this is like pretty old. The I Think I Love You palette. Um, I'm going for like a yellowy type eye look. Not really sure. So I'm going to start off with this uh, brown color right here. I'm going to start off with this brown color and just 
put that on the base of my eye. I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna be using three colors this whole eye look. I'm using my ColourPop um, blending brush thing. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else I should say about um, first semester of OT um, school. Overall, I would rate it like pretty high. I enjoyed my first semester. It was a pretty good semester for me. You know, I felt like I did pretty well. I know that, and this is something that I already knew about myself, even like from high school and like undergrad, I know that I can manage my time better and utilize my time better. So I feel like if I do, the quality of my work would be better, like even better than it already is. Obviously, I was able to make a 4-0 this semester. And y'all, I've never made a 4-0 in college. I'm just letting y'all know that right now. I think the last time I made a 4 -0 was like one semester, like one marking period in high school. It would be better for me to not procrastinate and like get on things when I need to and not wait until the test to study for things and go over con like stuff from class. It would increase the quality of my work and like increase my retention because honestly at this point of school, it's not about your grades, it's about what you learn because you'll be using it when you become a practitioner. Just utilizing my time properly to uh, um, make sure I'm grasping the information. I would say one thing that worked for me, I didn't do it very often because I kind of figured this out like halfway through the semester, low key towards the end, was that staying on campus after class, like doing work at school after class is over helped me get things done. Getting things done right then and there in a school environment was the best thing for me because it, I was able to focus more when I'm like on campus versus the moment I get home, I get, it's easier for me to get super distracted. Doing schoolwork at school is probably something I should implement a whole lot more. It's a little different this semester because I'm working at the, at the gym on campus and it's basically like a paid study hall. So it's like a designated time where I can do homework when I actually do my homework. <laughs> Yo, so I decided that I'm gonna need like a little bit of a darker brown as well. So I'm using this Morphe palette, Natural Glow Morphe 350 palette. And I'm going to find like a darker brown to put on the upper eyelid part of my eye. This one. But y'all, overall, I really, I really don't have any bad things to say about this semester. It was really, it went really well for me. Makes me feel good that I was able to do so well, and hopefully, I can continue, continue that throughout this, you know, for, throughout the rest of the program. I know there are things that I could probably change about my study habits. Like my study habits for this semester was really like I don't really have study ha habits. <laughs> like it's kind of just like a oh the test is coming you know, the test is coming in a week. Oh, I have time to study. I don't have to study right now. I'll do something else. And then it's like, like a couple days before the test. I'll either start studying a couple days before the test or like the day before, depending on like what is due that, you know, that week and like what else we have going on that week. It's not a good thing. So don't like watch this video and people who are in school or wanting to go to OT school or whatever, don't be like me and wait till the last minute to um, study. I, I haven't failed a test this semester, which I come to be is good. It's honestly, God was on my side, y'all. God was on my side for a lot of it. Don't be like me and be proactive and give yourself time to do things. It was only God who got me through. I mean, some of me too, cause, but mostly God. So, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but we are rolling with it, okay? This might turn out to be a terrible, hot mess like it really might just and if it does then whatever now i'm going to take the zulu pilot by juvia and i'm going to take this like really bright yellow and i'm going to try to do something with it you can see this is the brush i use for the yellow because it's yellow this shader brush this i guess larger shader brush by color pop i'm taking this urban decay all nighter setting spray and i'm going to wet it a little bit hopefully that will like make the color show up more gonna take a minute you know i probably should do like a like a cut crease type of action but you know i don't know 
how to do that. So this is gonna have to work. Since this color is so bright and I'm doing it on a brown eye, I'm gonna have to like really pack it on there. So I just kind of wanted to show y'all real quick of what is coming out to be. I found out it works better if I use my finger, so I just been patting it on there like that. And so far, it looks good from what I see in the mirror. I'm taking this, um, this is a Lux, uh, Luxie brush, 207 medium angled shading brush. I like this to do like the outer corners of my eyes and I'm gonna take this black on this ColourPop palette. Is this the right brush that I use? Oh, you know what, sweetheart? This is the wrong brush, cause this is kinda thick. I need a smaller brush. This is um, Firma 202. I don't, listen, I don't know y'all. I don't know. So I'm gonna just put a little bit on there like that and then um, kind of blend it out a little bit. This is kind of what I'm going for. I mean, it ain't like, you know, Instagram model, you know, I give it no Insta model, but it's, it's giving, you know? And I think what I want to do, y'all, is I want to add some glitter. So I have these two, these two um, gold colors. This one's like a, like a true gold and this one's not as much. I will kind of want to stick some right on my eye. I'm going for the like super yellow gold. To put the gold on, I'm going to use this little tiny Luxie brush, small shader brush to Luxie 245 brush. And I'm taking this super like yellow shade right there, super yellow gold shade right there. I'm going to spray a little bit. So what I'm gonna do the other eye and then I'm gonna come back. Both eyes are done. They don't look the same. They ain't perfect. Honestly, giving amateur because that is what I am. But you know what? It's fine, you know? I can't really see what I'm doing, but it's okay though. You know what? It's fine. We ain't worrying about it. I guess I can continue with my face. I'm just gonna put like a little bit up here using my NYX found NYX. Why well, I keep saying NYX? NYX foundation. And we just gonna paint it on like a paintbrush. I feel like a canvas. We're gonna paint it on and then we're going to blend it. See, makeup is one of those things that look like really bad while you're doing it and you just really have to wait until you're done to get the finished product. Because when you're doing it, it's like, oof, yikes. Am I doing this right? But when it's done, it all comes together, you know, in the end. So I don't really have much else to say about school. I've answered all the questions that I can remember and even try to like add things that I thought would be helpful. Make sure you get that knit. So the rest of this video would just be about me putting this makeup on, I guess, y'all. I have two Tarte concealers, the Shape Tape concealers. I bought the lighter one first in shade tan deep honey and then I, I thought that was like too light for me so then I bought the deep one. But the point of this stuff is to like highlight your face, right? So you don't want it too dark, right? So I think I'm going to, for a change, I'm going to use the lighter one and see how that turns out. Oh wow, that's so, that's super light. That's too light. Never mind. Never mind. If anyone wants some shape tape in, um, shade tan deep honey let me know because it's way too light for me so i'm gonna take the deep shape tape and i'm going to um i guess do what i see people do on the internet if any people out there if any of you guys out there watching are like fellow like you know ot grad students you know the point of this channel was like not only to just document my journey in ot school but to maybe connect with other OT students, you know, specifically like other like, you know, black OT students or it's not a whole lot of us in this um, profession. And I figured, you know, if other young black women or just other black women in general come across my channel who are interested in OT, they see someone who looks like them because I know when I was applying to OT school, one of the things that I did was I looked on YouTube. I looked on YouTube to to um you know to see other people's journeys and I didn't find a whole lot of like black girls doing stuff like this because there's not a lot of us in this um, profession in this field so I know there's more out there maybe now so if any of y'all are fellow OT students comment on you know this video tell me about 
if you're like in the same like kind of boat that I am, just starting OT school, just finish your first semester, you know, comment on this video. You can like reach out to me on Instagram. Or I'd love to connect with other people, other OT students, other black OT students. And if any of y'all are Muslim out there, you know, hit me up, you know? I feel like black OTs are a small population within the OT profession. And then Muslim black OTs, or even like a smaller, even smaller population because I have yet to come across, not to lie, I've come across Muslim, a Muslim OT on Instagram, but she's not black. But that, you know, that's, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's cool to connect with other Muslim OTs. It's, it, I would be interested to see how many uh, of us black Muslim women are out there like pursuing occupational therapy. Um, as a profession. Hit me up and if you like this video, like it and subscribe to my channel so you can keep following me, you know, creeping on my life. Nah, I'm joking. Show support and all that stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, I think I've done all the blending that I could. Y'all, I know my edges is out. Don't come for me. I have natural edges, not these like swoopy swoopy things that y'all be seeing on the internet nowadays. They try to tame our curliness. Nah, I'm joking. Don't listen to me. I'm just saying madness because I have yet to master the little, the swoops. Contouring is a thing that I ha still don't know how to do. Um, don't know what to buy for it. Don't know how to do it. Don't know. Don't know what to do. So I bought this. Um, this is by Black. Is it called Black Radiance? I think Br Black Radiance Contour Perfect Foundation Stick. And this is my this is my attempt at trying to contour. So this is this is what it looks like. I still haven't mastered this, and like it's like every time I use this, I don't even know if it really did anything. What I see on the internet is like people kind of go like you know like that. I don't know like that around their face, y'all. I really don't know how to contour like this, like this, Woo! and like maybe like around their head, like around the face. If y'all know how to do makeup in real life, please don't come for me because I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, like, bam, like, do y'all see this madness? Side note, y'all, I was looking back on some of the footage and I can't, like I said, I can't see. It's really not looking all that good. And I'm probably out here embarrassing myself on the internet doing makeup. That's besides the point though, because it's okay. All right, we're done with this. We're done with the contour. All right, the contour is done. We want to do some highlight. Let's do some highlight. I'm using uh, L'Oreal Paris True Match Lumi Glow Nude Palette. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to be using the Jupiter color. And I'm using, um, the, oh, this is a Sasha uh, one too. A Sasha K fan highlighting brush. And we're just going to like do a little that action, you know? Do it there, like, hello. How you doing? Do it on the nose a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with it, so I'm just gonna leave it at that, because you can easily go a little bit too much with highlight. Oh, you know what? I need mascara and I need, like, liner. So I'm gonna use liquid liner, uh, Maybelline New York Line Stiletto Ultimate Precision Liquid Liner in the color black. Black is black. The black is black. I've been using this liner for a very long time. I have never used any other liquid liner. So I'm gonna do what I do and try to get two, you know, perfect wings, even though it's really not possible. But I think if I do the wings, it'll make this look, look a little better. At least the eye, it'll make the eye come to better. Come together better. Don't blink. Don't blink. I think this, I feel like the stakes are higher when you do, um, eyeshadow and put on liquid liner because it's like if you mess up your liner you mess up your whole eyeshadow it's harder to fix it versus if you don't have any eyeshadow on we're doing well so far okay wing now once you got the wing don't mess with it because once you mess with it, it that's when when that's when listen that's when it starts going downhill so you got a perfect wing leave it alone don't touch it no more yeah that definitely makes things <laughs> a little bit better now can we do it on the other eye Shout out to all the women out there who do this every day. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have put some setting powder on. Maybe I wouldn't be making such a mess. This is so disorganized, y'all, but whatever. I'm using that Black Radiance um, setting finishing powder again. I'm just gonna put it all over my face. I probably should have put this on before the highlighter. Whatever. We can always put some more highlighter on, you know? 
y'all i know i remember when i first like got into makeup one of the first things i did like i said was i bought that concealer and i put it like all over my face and i went to work and i didn't know that like you have to use setting powder when you put on like liquid makeup like that and girl, I was so oily, like it was terrible. Setting powder just does wonders. You can't really see my highlight now, so I'm gonna add more. Let's finish the eye. Mm. Don't blink. I blink. I blinked. Oh no. The left one just never hit like the right one do. It just never does, you know? Now, for the moment of truth. So, oh my goodness. It definitely don't hit like the right one, but I don't have time to be like, you know, trying to fix it or whatever. I mean, I do, but I don't. You know. It's more like, I don't feel like fixing it. Like even, there's, I messed up a little bit. No one can see that other than me. Unless you're just like all up in my face, you know what I'm saying? Then why are you in my face? Like, back up. Voluminous Million Lashes uh, Mascara by, uh, hello? Um, um, I think this is L'Oreal. I think, I really don't know. And I'm gonna put some um, mascara on. One thing I don't do is lashes just because for us glasses wearers, or maybe just for me, I'm not gonna categorize everyone. One, I'm bad at putting on lashes. <laughs> um, I haven't mastered that. And two, I haven't found lashes that are short enough to like sit under my glasses because those super long lashes like bang into the, the lens and it just, it just never works. I know they have shorter lashes. It's just, I'm not into lashes enough to like really care to like search for them. And I don't really don't know how to do lashes. <laughs> I messed up. Don't blink when you put on mascara. I'm gonna put some on my lower lash. I use this Maybelline New York Master Kajal in Onyx Rush color shade to do my lower lash line. That don't look half bad, you know? It don't look half bad. I'm gonna reapply the highlight. Put a little bit of this stuff back on because we gotta be popping, you know? We're gonna shine it. Cool. Cool, cool. We're gonna do a lip now. Um, to align my lips, I'm using this MAC uh, lip liner in chestnut. Uh, as you can see, it's old and beat up looking, but I think this is like my second one of these, I'm not sure. The lip that I usually go for nowadays is like a nude, so I learned this trick like a, a while ago on YouTube, some YouTube makeup tutorial, to do like a nude lip. I super line my lower lip, right? I take a nude um, color. I don't, um, I have so much. It's ridiculous the amount of NYX lip products I have. Some of them are not even open. I just be buying them. I have a lot of these butter glosses that I don't use, which is really a shame. And the lipstick that I do want, I'm pretty sure my sister has it. I'm gonna take this NYX soft matte lip cream in the color Athens. I don't even know why I keep doing this because I don't even know if y'all can see it. And I'm gonna just go over, ooh, this is running out. Go over my lips with this. Is this the color? Hold on a hot minute, hot second, because I don't know if that's the color. Is this the color? That's kind of bright. Actually, I lied, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the color Stockholm. Okay, this sounds about right, because this is the one I use. Put it on my lips and just like, you know, blend it out to make the nude looking effect. Make sure your lips aren't dry like mine. Mm, 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 mm. This is basically like the look that I'm going for for my lips. So like a nude type situation. And so after that, I take one of these millions of butter glosses by NYX that I have and I put it on top, give it some gloss. Why do I have two of these? These are literally the same thing. What is my life? So I'm thinking maybe I'll use this one. Yeah, this is a nice shade. And I basically just do the same thing. Blend it out, blend it out, baby. That's perfect, that's perfect the way it is. And then I'm gonna take this highlighter again and do it on my little lippy thing, you know, the little, what do they call that? The, um, your, the crest of your lip. Okay, and then I guess I can take this um, setting spray from Urban Decay and spray on my face. This is honestly the worst part, I hate doing this. Um, it's like a shock every time, you know, when it hits your face, but we won't do it. <laughs> See, I'm already anticipating. <laughs> so basically, here's the final look. My camera's gonna die. 
um thank you guys for watching thank you guys for subscribing who already do oh it doesn't look that bad with the camera i'm sorry if this um video was a bit chaotic it is what it is yeah thank you for watching and tuning in um like comment subscribe keep showing your girl some support and i hope you enjoyed this video um yeah i'll see you in the next one kind of wanted to show you guys like the final look so i'm gonna Staying in front of the mirror. I mean, at the right of the window. And this is the final look. It doesn't look bad from what I can see. My eye, listen, my eyeshadow might not look all that good, but whatever.